Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi with The Media Speaks, bringing you the news and commentary of the day. Um, before I get into it, um, those of you that have uh, been with the show for a minute, I'm speaking to you and any new viewers, of course, all the news, everything that you normally get from the show, you're going to get, I promise. But I have to do this because I've only got eight days left to do this. And if it doesn't happen in eight days, then it's not going to happen. The music that starts the show, that's the band passing time. That's the band that I'm in. We have been afforded some very, very good luck. Very, very good luck. And um, there's a marketing deal looking at us where for $1,000, we are going to get put in front of a lot of the places uh, that we need to get to. It's gonna open, open a lot of doors that are not open to us now. So, I'm joined by the illustrious, uh, beautiful Serenity, and uh, hello Tony, her boyfriend Tony, joined in the studio today. Many of you will know that we have a Kickstarter program going on. We do. Making me bring my own chair. Well, I don't know where Christelle is. Well, we have we have an odd little contest here. Anybody that donates to this Bing Kickstarter program, anybody that donates at least $25 is going to find out something different about Serenity. Tony's like laughing. Don't laugh. If you're going to laugh, laugh loud. Like the half laugh isn't going to pick up. Um... He's too shy. Many of you may uh, may know Serenity Rose from Facebook. Uh, she is a dancer at an adult club and the singer of our band. What are you doing for twenty five dollar mm -hmm. donations to our listeners who are eighteen years or older? Yes, and you must send verification. Cover up your address. I really don't care where you live. Um, let me know that you're over the age of 18 and you will get a lovely bikini picture of myself. We are bikini picturing, yes. Yeah, so why am I starting the correct views asking for this? I can tell you why. Are you sick of Rihanna, Nickelback, and Jace Everett? Because that's the only three kinds of music you have. Everything sounds just like that. Everything. Well, you can donate to this link right here. If you give $25, you'll get naughty pictures. Bikini pictures of our singer Serenity, which uh, need to be in the right place at the right time to get those. Uh, you can look up Serenity Rose on Facebook.com. She's our singer. Oh, what the hell? Let's spice it up a little bit. Again, prove you are over the age of 18. If anybody donates $100 or more, I may just uh, be able to talk Tony into letting me take a topless picture her boyfriend is like got big eyes all she did is set me up to get my butt kicked as soon as the show is over is all she did all right 18 or over <laughs> that's great hey do you think i've been gonna let me know this before we went on air 18 or over Sorry. 18 or over topless picture if you donate a hundred dollars uh if you donate 25 dollars you get bikini pictures uh sent to you so uh Thank you, Serenity Rose, of Passing Times. Thank you for Time. having me on. Always, friends, um, go to Passing Times of uh, Kickstarter. Help us out. We have eight days to raise the money, or guess what? It's not going to happen at all. All right, three minutes for a self-plug that I had to do. Friends, I've got 402 videos that I have given my entire thought of nothing but bringing you news. I took three minutes to help myself. Yes, I did. Had to. All right, friends. Uh, Got to pay the bills. Thehill.com. This is wonderful news. Not just wonderful news. Amazing news of, of unbelievable variety here. Hillary Clinton is hit with racketeering lawsuit over her emails. For those of you that don't know, the, the fine queen, uh, Hillary Clinton, decided that it was more convenient to send her emails through a private server than it was to use the existing server. So let me ask you something. I have, I have a bit of a background in this. It's not easier 
to set up your own server than it is to use the server that somebody else had already had set up. Okay, no, not at all. <coughs> Pardon me. Rather, she didn't want her emails, especially regarding things like Benghazi, to be known, which of course is the, uh, the, the disaster for those of you that may not know. The Benghazi disaster led to uh, the fall and destruction of Libya and the death of um, one of our ambassadors. She was hiding it is what she was doing. And then her and her aides deleted it. Do you know that if you are Secretary of State, that is an extremely punishable offense in every possible way? So the hill.com brings you this. I would not look it up here because the hill they have the most annoying pop-ups and non-stop audio. It brings your computer to a crawl. Some of them you can't even pause. So I'm giving you the source, but I wouldn't go there. Terrible website. The conservative group Freedom Watch has filed a racketeering lawsuit against former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton that accuses her of failing to produce documents under the Freedom of Information Act, which, of course, is there for a reason. We live in an open society. Um, our leaders have to let us know. The, I mean, it's a law. It's been law since America. It's, it's not new. It's not like they're going after her because she's a woman, which the feminazis like to say, to quote Rush. No, that is not the case. It says the civil suit filed Wednesday in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida argues that Clinton used her private emails to sell access to other officials in return for donations to the Clinton Foundation. This is yet another problem beyond the uh, Libyan scandal, which uh, was uh, drawing my ire. It alleges that during her tenure, Clinton withheld documents requested under the Freedom of Information Act regarding State Department waivers given to businesses or individuals doing business in Iran with Iran, possibly undermining U.S. imposed sanctions. Why does that matter? I'm going to be doing a massive Fukushima update in just a few days, and in it, I'm going to be talking about how they are not allowing the Atomic Agency to look at the construction of the Iranian website they're doing everything that looks as though they're possibly planning on weaponizing it. Now, for those of you that don't agree with that, for those of you that are on Iran's side in this for some reason, which I don't understand, but I run into all the time, okay, listen to me before you start disliking the video and leaving hate comments. There is a... This isn't Jewish or Iranian. This isn't uh, Islamic or Christian. This is fact. Scientists know that there's going to be the likelihood of a very huge, very destructive earthquake in that region. The kind of earthquake that shut down and melted down part of Fukushima. For those of you that don't know, it was not the tidal wave that melted down all of the reactors. Much of the meltdown activity started from the earthquake. Even if the tidal wave had never hit, we would still be talking about a certain number of meltdowns there. Iran is going to repeat that. So if you are really on Iran's side, the way that you claim that you are, then you have to understand that if they melt this down with an earthquake, what's going to happen is that's going to kill a lot more Islamists than any number of Jews have. And no matter what, that is going to be a mathematical fact. Look at what's happening in Belarus after Chernobyl. If you question me, I'm not making this up, friends. <coughs> the complaint, which a link to it Hill, uh, here on the Hill website, which lists Bill and Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation as defendants, alleges that the Clintons sold access to other U.S. government officials in return for donations to their organization, which they concealed, allegedly by using a private computer server for her emails operated out of their home in Chappaqua, New York. In other words, Mrs. Clinton was saying, well, I'll let you talk to Bill, or I'll let you talk to a fill-in-the-blank person of importance. 
you will donate this money to me, but we'll do it through my server so nobody knows. And then, of course, that is used for political purposes, and that is the exact opposite of everything our country has ever been founded upon, which is why it's important enough that I'm doing my commentary on it. Larry Klayman, the founder of Freedom Watch, launched dozens of lawsuits against former President Bill Clinton's administration. In the new lawsuit, he alleges that during Hillary Clinton's tenure, the State Department clearly leaked information to New York Times reporter David Sanger on U.S. and Israeli efforts to counteract Iran's nuclear weapons program. Public reports about plans to counter Iran's nuclear weapons development programs undermine the effectiveness of those plans by revealing them to Iran and other terrorist organizations and states. In other words, helping, if not our enemy, a very questionable regime that has a lot of hatred to the U.S., whether it's warranted or not is irrelevant, they hate us, that's what matters. Um, helping this structure work against what the government has done as official policy. Her own side, going against things that even Obama has allowed to remain in place. The woman has betrayed other Democrats, for crying out loud. That's another way to look at it. Friends, I don't care if you're going to vote libertarian like I probably am. I don't care if you're going to vote Ron Paul like I might. I don't care if you're going to vote for someone that I am not going to vote for, like Warren. What matters is that this woman is against everything that both parties officially stand for. When you look at her with any kind of open mind and any kind of sense of history and constitutionality, she's bad news, people. <coughs> Real bad news. Speaking of meltdowns and things nuclear, <clears throat> I'm going to get to this a little bit of a, a heads up before we go into the massive Fukushima update in a, in a, few, in a few days, a week, on the beginning of the month. ZeroHedge.com, Japan's Pacific Rim job, build a 250-mile anti-tsunami wall to create jobs. I'm not completely against this. I understand that a lot of people are saying that this is going to build complacency and that people won't live in higher areas, which they should because there will be future tsunamis, obviously, in Japan. That's arguably how it was created. There's going to be other, other massive tsunamis and tidal waves that hit the area. What they're saying is <clears throat> we're going to build a wall to prevent at least a very high percentage of the damage in areas. I am not against it. I'm not. I think this is a very common sense idea. It ruins the view. Yeah, well, you want the view of a tidal wave washing your house away. Um, I'm sorry. I don't think that this is a bad idea. Um, again, is it going to be foolproof? Should it, should it lead to complacency? No, it should not. Uh, you, you know what you're doing if you live near the beach, but at least in Japan. But it would be very wise to do this. I'm, I'm not against it. Guys, let me know what you think. It appears that Japanese policymakers are getting inspiration from Hollywood for their latest economic fixes. Having begun the building of a giant Game of Thrones-esque ice wall to hold back the radiation leaking from Fukushima, only to fail miserably, that was an awful idea, the latest cunning plan from the Japanese is to build a Pacific Rim-esque massive costly seawall to fend off tsunamis. The 6.8 billion, 250 mile long, 41 foot high concrete barrier public works project is seen by some as a necessary evil and by others as a jail. You know what? I don't agree. I'm sorry, Tyler Durden. I usually agree with you here at uh, Zero Hedge, but no, I don't agree. I think that this is not going to build complacency. I think this is one step in a direction that will save a lot of people's life in the long run. Um, there are people saying that they want it because it's going to create jobs and each community is going to have to hire so many people. It's more than the dollars and cents. Um, I, I don't even care so much about that. I do think there are areas that could benefit from this. Leave a message in the comment line. Let me know what you think. 
We're going to move on. Prison planet, uh, actually economic collapse. Michael Snyder, most Americans are slaves, and they don't even know it. This article struck me uh, for a number of reasons, and I've been keeping it since February. Here it goes. Most Americans spend their lives working for others, paying off debts to others, and performing tasks that others tell them that they must do. These days, we don't like to think of ourselves as servants or slaves, but that is what the vast majority of us are. It is just the mechanisms of our enslavement have become much more sophisticated over time. <clears throat> it has been said that the borrow, borrower is servant to the lender, and most of us start going into debt very early in our adult lives. In fact, those who go to college get an education, uh, to get an education are likely to enter the real world with a staggering amount of debt. I haven't made a lot of really huge mistakes in my life, but uh, the number of student loans that I allowed to be taken out in my name by a certain person who I trusted was one of them. Um, so I, I understand this. It says, the course that is just the beginning of the accumulation, today when you add up all the mortgage debt, all credit card debt, and all student loan debt, the average American household today is carrying a grand total of $203,163 of debt. That's staggering to me, by the way. I can't even imagine that. Overall, most American households are more than $11 trillion in debt at this point. And even though most Americans don't realize this, over the course of their lifetimes, the amount of money that they will repay on our debts is far greater than the amount that we originally borrowed. In fact, when it comes to credit card debt, he writes, you can easily end up repaying several times the amount of money that you originally borrowed. So we work our fingers to the bone to pay off these debts, and the vast majority of us are not even working for ourselves. God, I wish we were. Instead, our work makes the business that other people own even more profitable. So if we spend our best years of our lives building businesses for others, servicing debts that we owe to others, and making others wealthier, what exactly does that make us? In 2015, the words servants and slave have very negative connotations, and we typically don't use them very much. Instead, we use words like employee because they make us feel so much better. <clears throat> this is, but is there really much difference, he asks. This is how Google defines servant. Quote, a person who performs duties for others, especially a person employed in the house of domestic duties or the personal attendant. This is how Google defines slave a person who is the legal property of another and is forced to obey them. This is how Google defines employee. A person employed for wages or salary, especially on a non-executive level. It goes on, most of us might not be legal property of someone else in the very narrow sense, but in the broader sense, we have to answer to someone. We all have someone that we must obey. We all have obligations that we must meet or else face consequences. At this point, it says, Americans are more dependent on the system than ever before. Small business ownership in the U.S. is at a record low, and the percentage of Americans that are self-employed has fallen to unprecedented levels in recent years. Pause. And this is where the commentary of the correct views becomes very, very accurate. Um... Everything that you've just heard that this gentleman wrote, I can tell you from life experience, is 110% true. Do you realize that my brother and I would have long owned a nightclub? We have a business plan drawn up for it. We have the talent to make it happen. And we, we have absolute proof that it's going to bring in quite a bit of money. I don't want to give more than that because I'll get the idea stolen. But... They have erected so many barriers to anybody starting a business that you can't do anything because you can't get your hands on enough money to actually make it happen. I may be purchasing a house to rent. The only reason that happened is because some unfortunate, through a series of horrible events that I wish never would have happened, both of my parents died. So, in this country, if you don't have a lot of money and you work your whole life and you never slack off, which is the definition of me my whole life, by the way, 
Unless someone dies, you'll never own anything that you can actually make money from in the long run. And if you think that that's false, then go ahead and look up all the barriers that there are in this country. That is one of the main reasons that I am so adamantly libertarian. We do not need this many restrictions to stop, stop a person or a number, a small group of people from starting a business. The reason that this happens, among other things, such as greed and revenue for the state as a whole, is because this opens the door for large corporations, like Chili's or McDonald's or whatever, to come in. Because Sam's Burger Hut would cause so much to open that it could never happen. So please pay attention to this. Don't zone out. Don't just assume, oh yeah, the economy sucks, I know, next. Don't skip ahead. Listen to this. It says, from a very early age, we are trained to study hard so that we can get a good job and be good cogs of the system. But what is life? But what, but what is life about? Is it about being a cog in the system that ultimately benefits only others? Perhaps you don't think that any of this applies to you personally. Well, if someone came up to you and asked you what you truly own, what would you say? Do you own your vehicle? Most Americans don't. Pause. Let me tell you how I've started doing it recently. Now, you need to buy bigger vans, and don't feel bad about it. Man-made global warming is a lie. Um, although, I, I would argue the carbons are giving us all cancer, but what are you going to do? Get a larger uh, vehicle. I've been getting cargo vans because I'm in a band. I play keyboards. I play two of them. So, I mean, again, without question, I need a very big vehicle. I also snowboard. Um... If you can get it for around a grand, $1,200, <coughs> that cargo van will get you everywhere you want to go. I had a uh, 1989 cargo van that I drove through five states in. <clears throat> you can, uh, I, I think I want to say I put like 250,000 miles on this car, 200,000, I don't... We drove everywhere. We may, you can look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me. Uh, it's a documentary we made, and the van is in it. You can also see it in uh, Becoming Paul Revere, the other documentary that it drove into. One was made in Virginia. One was made in Chicago. So you get the point. Uh, for $1,200, say I put another grand in it. For $2,200, I had the van for over two years. The junk value of a van that heavy is between three to five hundred dollars, depending. If you've been saving even five dollars when you get off work every day for your next vehicle, when you junk it, you can repeat the entire process over again. Why can somebody, I'm just a DJ, guys, that's all I am, I'm a DJ. How does a DJ afford to go snowboarding at resorts? By not having a car payment, that's how. I don't want a damn car payment. So there you go, free advice, that's how you do that. It says, in fact, today the average auto loan at signing is approximately $27,000 and many of them stretch on for six or seven years. My ex used to talk me into that, it was absolute hell. It says, what about a home? Obviously most Americans don't own the home. In fact, banks have much greater ownership and interest of our homes and our land than we do. Um, if you have your entire home paid off, do you own it? It says not really. It happens if you quit paying your property taxes, which is, of course, rent to the authorities. Uh, what about other stuff? It says, you know, and it goes into all the debt that we have for, uh, you know, TVs, whatever, whatever, whatever. But think about it. You can't become anything, hardly, in this country because of the rather vile set of laws that prevent you from actually be able to being able to achieve your dreams and yet there's there's everything that I just read to you there happening and there's there's almost nothing anybody can do about it because we don't have a structure that is set up again as I said in a very libertarian or constitutionalist way we have this to quote George Bush new world order system this central banking system we have these military industrial complexes. What is that? You hear it all the time. It's the need to pay for war by taxing war. And you can see it every day. I mean, you don't have to listen to me to know that. Uh, 
I've given you what you need to know, and this is why we need to vote for people that are not in the two major parties. And again, I know I mentioned Rand earlier, but I did a whole show on Rand, if you want my thoughts on him. No, I don't think he'd be a bad president. No, I don't think he'll be a great one. Um, jury acquits grower who cited medical need for marijuana. This is the Sun Sentinel. This is wonderful news. We needed some good news after that hang story I just did. It said it worked. For the first time in Florida history, a Broward County jury acquitted a marijuana grower after finding he has a medical need for the illegal drug. Jesse Teplicky hid nothing from the detectives who showed up at his Hollywood home two years ago, acting on a tip that he was growing pot on the premises. Oh my God, he's the devil. He did nothing from the jury. He, he, I'm sorry, he hid nothing from the jury on Thursday when he took the stand at his criminal trial, even admitting that he smoked marijuana cigarette earlier in the day to treat nausea and suppressed appetite that had been plaguing him for decades. Teplicki is the first defendant in Florida to argue medical need in a marijuana case. The jury of four women and two men deliberated for less than an hour before returning the verdict. You saved my life, a tear, tear, tearful Teplicki told three jurors who stayed in the courtroom after they were discharged by Broward Circuit Judge Michael Ian Rothschild. Manufacture of cannabis is a felony, it says, punishable by up to five years in prison. And Teplicki, 50, had rejected several plea offers, admitting his actions but referring to the plant as medicine that he needs to function. He has suffered anorexia since the age of nine, according to a trial testimony. Again, just eat. You know what? I guess I, I, I've gone through periods where I've starved myself because I've gotten heavier. I get it. <clears throat> I don't know. In any event, it's a, it's a lot better than the drugs that they want to give you to make you hungry. Marijuana is by far and away better for you than any of that. It says medical need has worked for defense before, but it's never been tried in front of a jury. Well, it's good to see that it happened for him. Again, let's remember what jury nullification is, too. It's when a jury acquits somebody, even if they broke the law, because the law in and of itself is wrong and unconstitutional. So... Something like that may have happened here. I also want to invite you, especially if you're in Ohio, if you don't do this and you're in Ohio and you're listening to the show, there's something wrong with you. Ballotpedia.org, uh, Ohio Marijuana Legal Legalization Initiative 2015. <coughs> to make a long story short, if this is going to happen, it's got to happen by July. I want to say it's... Uh, July 1st, 2015, they need 305,591 signatures. And it would legalize the recreational and medical use of marijuana for persons who are 21 years or age or older. That would save us a fortune in taxes and free up a lot of people. Friends, I'm proud to tell you that Facebook.com has lost the correct views because I am not changing my name to be on their crappy site. So make sure you look up the correct views at Tumblr. T-U-M-B-L-R. I don't know why they spelled it that way. It's awful, but they did. And uh, you'll get the correct views on a regular basis now. Screw Facebook. Um, I will say this, though. If you're trapped on Facebook, look up Mike McLaughlin. Why? Because he's an amazing writer. And I'm proud to have a writer as a sponsor, sponsor of the show in every possible way. Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C, laugh, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Let him know you heard about his writings from the correct views. He writes vampire stories. He writes poetry. He writes political rants. You've got to go and look him up. And please let him know you heard about it from the correct views. Friend Steve Watson, PrisonPlanet.com. And this is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. You have an idea in your head and think, I would be a great sticker. I would love to do that. You're in a band like I am. You need stickers. If you have a rough idea of what you want, go to StickerJunkie.com and tell David Lake that you were told by Sam at The Correct Views that he could make you the most wicked sticker you've ever seen. And mark my words, that'll happen. Cops in Florida burst into a man's house rented by, 20, by 320 something friends this week and immediately shot one of them dead, according to accounts, despite the fact that he was unarmed and non-threatening, according to the article. Again, uh, Steve Watson, cops bust into house, shoot unarmed man in the face. 26-year-old Derek Cruz was shot in the face and killed during the botched raid in Deltona. 
His shocked friend said he did nothing wrong and described the act as murder, which clearly it seems as there's no other there's no other way you could look at. It. <coughs> it says Cruz's housemates say that the cops smashed down the door with a battering ram at 7 a.m. while they were in bed. Cruz, wearing only basketball shorts and no shirt, was in the first was the first to emerge from his bedroom and was shot on sight, according to his friend Stephen Cochran. The police had claimed that Cruz advanced towards them, but the housemates say that this 